All right, now I'm going to start off by introducing everyone that we have up here. First, we have Pastor Chris Ashley. He's on the far left. He said to describe himself, he is saved by the grace of God and called by the grace of God. He's been here at Calvin Road Baptist Church since 2007. <coughs> Next to him, we have Usama Dakdok. He has his bachelor's in theology, a master's in missiology from the New Orleans Baptist Seminary, and he works with Straight Way of Grace Ministry. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you. On the other side, we have Abdul Jamil, and he is here representing Muhammad and the concern of all mankind. Next to him, we have Iman Yahya Shabazz. He is the president of Iman Quitman Mississippi Islamic Center. He is the host of AmericanMuslim360.com on radio Saturdays at 6. And lastly, we have Dawood Salam. He joined the Nation of Islam in the mid-1990s, transitioned to mainstream Islam in 2001. He is the current director of the Mississippi Gulf Coast Transitional Program. All right, now we're going, we're going to start the debate. The way it's going to start is each side will have a 13-minute opening statement. And I will be keeping time, so I ask that you all stick to your time. When you hear the alarm go off, that means your time's up, okay? You all can begin. I also believe in that shaitan and regime. I seek refuge with Allah from the accursed shaitan. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful redeemer, in the Arabic language, we say Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. And that is to say that not only do all praises belong to Allah, the Lord of all the worlds, but all praises belong to Allah, the Lord of all systems of knowledge, past, present, future, seen, not seen, revealed, not revealed. We thank Him and we could never thank Him enough for the prophets, the messengers, and scriptures in which He has sent to the human family. We thank him for Moses and the Torah. We thank him for Jesus and the Injil. And we as Muslims could never thank him enough for Prophet Muhammad and the Holy Quran. May the peace and blessings of Allah forever be upon not one, not some, but all his worthy servants. I greet you all who are here today in the reading words of peace as we speak it in the Arabic language. Assalamu alaikum. <clears throat> I would like to thank Almighty God Allah for blessing us with this opportunity. I would like to thank Pastor Ashley for extending this opportunity to us, and I would also like to thank uh, his congregation for participating in this. I would like to thank the Muslims who are supporting this cause. I think this is a very good cause. Uh, I believe that this is a catalyst event that could possibly inspire others in the state of Mississippi to have discussions like this. Pastor Ashley and I have been talking over the phone maybe for about close to a week now. Although I'm a Muslim and he's a Christian and we have varying opinions and views of our belief systems, I don't see him as an enemy. And I, there's nothing that I would do to hurt that brother. Nothing. If someone, if I was walking by here, even with that sign out there, and someone was doing harm to this church, vandalizing, it's my duty as a Muslim to stop that person from doing what they're doing, because this is a house of worship. <clears throat> Pastor Ashley, I would like to ask you a question, because I've been, I've been curious, I've been watching some things over the internet, and um, I just wanted to hear from you. What is it exactly? That, uh, that is in your mind uh, to make you believe that Allah is Satan. So we're, we're, we'll get to that. In oh, okay. I want you do your opening. Okay. But we're got, I've got, we've got plenty. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. I don't want to take up your time. Yes, sir. All right. According to the New International Version of the Bible, Joshua 24, 15 reads, But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. In this verse, Joshua is challenging his people to not serve the false gods that didn't benefit their ancestors, but to serve the God that delivered them 
out of the hands of the Egyptians. Amen. Now, the question is regarding Pastor Ashley's post. Why did he use this particular verse? I'm sure he'll answer that. Evidently, since there are very few Arabic-speaking Christians in the U.S. and probably less than none in Mississippi, I believe, and I may be wrong, that he is speaking to Muslims and challenging Muslims to serve who he believes is the true God and for Muslims to stop serving Allah whom he views as the Satan. Since we're talking about Allah, it would make perfect sense for us to educate ourselves about the word Allah. Allah is an Arabic word that can be broken down into at least two parts. Al and La. Al is a definite article in the Arabic language and it is the equivalent of the definite article in the English language, the. And what is the function of a definite article? A definite article indicates that its noun is a particular one which is identifiable to the listener. But in the case of Allah, it is a case of him being exclusively unique, making direct reference to him and him alone. The Arabic word Allah isn't used for anything or anyone else but Allah and Allah alone. Allah, or I-L-H, means God, but not in the sense of status as being omnipotent and supreme or even independent. However, when the definite article Al is prefixed to it, omnipotence is there. Supremacy is there. And the definition would literally mean the one and only God and or the one true God. It is recorded that approximately 6 to 11 million Arab speaking Christians in the Middle East, maybe more, call God Allah. And were calling God Allah before Christianity spread to the West. Now when I read the verse uh, Joshua 24, 15, I had to question myself about who the Amorites were. Who are the Amorites, or who were they? And according to my research, the Amorites were a Semitic people who possibly emerged from western Mesopotamia, which is now modern-day Syria, prior to the third millennium BCE. They were initially in Sumeria, but later controlled Babylon. They worshipped their own pantheon of gods and out of those gods there were a chief deity whom they called Amuru. Mesopotamia is covered uh, with Syria, Iraq, Turkey and Iran much of what we call the Middle East and the Amorite period covered 2000 to 1600 BCE. Now according to Arabic language scholars the name for God has always been Allah in the Arabic. Pastor Ashley invoked Joshua 15 24 as if to say that Allah was one of the false gods that the ancestors of the children of Israel worship at least that's what I'm interpreting at any rate doing Amorite rule according to Wikipedia there weren't any Arab speaking people populating the Amorite Mesopotamia the Arabs didn't begin to populate Mesopotamia until after the 7th century AD now, I have a list of the gods, they call them the Mesopotamian gods, that were recognized by the Amorites during the Amorite rule. And on this list right here, there are 84 gods that they worship from the time of Samaria uh, into the Babylonian area. They're in alphabetical order. The first 12, all of them start with the letter A, but Allah is not mentioned. Now, according to Christian theology, the origin of Satan is explained that Satan was one of the four archangels whose name was Lucifer. And Lucifer was created to dwell eternally in the throne room of heaven in the very presence of God. It is taught that Lucifer's intellect exceeded his fellow angels. However, that intellect began to decline when he reached the conclusion that he should be higher than the Most High or that he should be the Most High. 
And as a result, he was stripped of his beauty and cast out of heaven. And from that time forward, he became known as the devil or Satan, but his angelic name was still uttered as is shown in Isaiah 14, verse number 12, in the first sentence. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? Now, to say that Allah is Satan is to say that Allah is Lucifer also. This would mean that Allah is one of the four angels. But to say that Allah is one of the four angels would be contradicting the Lucifer story. Because in the original Lucifer story, the archangels that were mentioned, at least the main four, the name Allah was never mentioned. In Islam, the Satan is specifically by name referred to as a bliss, who was originally a jinn, but came but became Satan after he refused to obey Allah. Now, as it is demonstrated from the Christian theology that Allah and Lucifer are two separate beings, so it is likewise with the bliss and Allah in the Quran. Now, in the Quran, Allah and Satan are shown to be two separate distinct beings. By one, the conversation that Allah had with Iblis, and by two, his warning human beings that the Satan is the chief deceiver, or the Satan is an enemy to man, and that Satan leads his followers to the hellfire. In Surah 35, Ayat number 5 and 6, we read in the Quran, Ayuthu Belehi Minash Shaitan al Rajim, Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim. Ya ayuna inna wa adalahi haq fala takhuran nakumul haya wa tu dunya wa la yakhuran nakum bilahil khairur inash shaitan lahum aduwum fat tani thu ku aduwan inna ma Ya'u his bahu liyaku nu min am habis sa'ir. Now, the noble translation reads O mankind, verily the promise of Allah is true. Let not this present life deceive you, and let not the chief deceiver deceive you about Allah. Surely, Satan is an enemy to you. So treat him as an enemy. He only invites his followers that they may become the dwellers of the blazing fire. In Arabic, you see the word shaitan, which means Satan, specifically mentioned, and you see Allah specifically mentioned. Allah is not saying that he is Satan. Neither is he saying that he is the chief deceiver. The chief deceiver title is given to the shaitan. Allah is Satan. <coughs> Jesus is God. I'd like to correct some of the statements of different in here. <coughs> Allah is not an Arabic word. It's actually the Hebrew word of the king, which is written in a plural form. Now, Al-Ilah is the right word we use as Christian in the Arabic language. No, al -Lah. For him to make al ilah, you have to add another alif to it to make it the right name. Leh is the moon god Arab worship years and years before Muhammad. Therefore, if he break Allah to al, which is a little, the word da in English, and leh, now we have a problem. He's talking about the moon god. The god of Christian have nothing to do with the god of Islam, Allah. For us Christian, when we say Allah, we're talking about Father, Son, Holy Spirit. But Muslim, when they say Allah, they're talking about no father, no son, and no Holy Spirit. Even though the Quran mentions such a thing, we'll talk about it later. Now let's move on to our study. The words, Jesus is God, Allah is Satan, quoted with a Bible scripture, can be seen on a marquee outside of Cowan Road Baptist Church. Now, those in the Muslim community are speaking out on what they feel is a religious attack. How did that make you feel hearing that, that news that went from a jog to a social media post to being a part of y'all's um, religious community? Well, I, 
felt that it was slanderous and I felt that it was a hateful message um, because at any time we've never slandered anything that uh, Christians on the coast do. Well, to say Allah is Satan is a hateful message for our dear Muslim friends, but to say Jesus is not God is okay to all Muslim friends. It is equal to say that Jesus is not God. It is to me greater than to say Allah is Satan. Because every Christian believes Jesus is God and not any Christian believes Allah to be God. And as we see today in our study, in our seminar here, you'll see that Allah is Satan throughout the Quran. I will be using the Quran to prove to you that Allah is Satan. And I'm surprised. Why most will get upset? How many Christian in America went and uh, destroyed a, a mosque or, or kill a Muslim for saying Jesus is not God? I believe they live in America assuming that America is the same where they come from. Because in Egypt where I come from, I could not say Allah is Satan, I'll be killed. And Muslim can say Jesus is not God all the time and we have to keep our mouth shut. This is a free country, America. This is not Saudi Arabia or Egypt. Now, let's move on our study. The words... Take me down if you don't mind, sister. Allah is Satan. Here's the four things we need to talk about tonight. Go ahead. The description of, of Allah and the description of Satan is what we're going to talk about here. As we see it throughout the Quran. The acts of Allah and the acts of Satan is what's important. And the revelation of Allah and the revelation of Satan. And the laws of Allah and the laws of Satan. When we study the Quran and we look at these four points, we will come to the conclusion that Allah is Satan. I'm sad to say that plenty of Muslim in America never read the Quran. Or when they read it, as my dear friend here, he's reading it with terrible Arabic. He cannot pronounce Arabic words. And obviously, he's reading the sugar-coated Quran in English. Therefore, he will not get the true meaning of the Quran. You must know Arabic to understand what we're talking about. So, here we go. Let's move on. Allah on the left side, on the right side, and Satan on the left side. Here we go. Let's see what we have in the Quran. Quran 59.23 He is Allah. There is no God except Him, the King, the Holy, the Peace, the Faithful, the Guardian, the Dear, the Powerful, the Proud. One of the names of Allah is the Proud. As a matter of fact, Allah and the Quran have 99 names. One of them is the Proud. No Christian in the Middle East, those who speak Arabic, or a Christian in planet Earth will ever say that God is Proud. It's gone. Another verse. Quran 16.23 no doubt that Allah knows what they hide and what they reveal. Surely He does not love the proud. Wait a minute. Allah is the proud, but Allah the Quran does not love the proud? Allah hates Himself? Let's see what Allah said in the Quran about Satan. Quran 2.34 And when He said to, to the angels, Azjadu is, is, is a word worship. As a matter of fact, that's a non-Arabic word of Aramaic origin. An amazing Muslim will tell us the Quran is pure Arabic. No, there are 279 foreign words in the Quran. Here is one of them. And they all worshipped except Iblis. He refused and became proud and he was among the infidels. Okay, Iblis is another word our dear friend mentioned earlier. It's actually the word devil and that's not an Arabic word. As a matter of fact, that's a Greek word Muhammad inserted in his Quran. In Quran 7.13 he said, so get down from it so it was not for you to, for it was not to you, proud in it, so get out. Surely you are the, you are the lowly. Allah in the Quran uh, cast Satan from heaven because he refused to worship Adam. That's not what the Bible said. Adam was never in the heaven. Adam was created here on earth. We know exactly where he was in the Garden of Eden. That's in Iraq. So obviously, Muhammad is confused. He made up so many stories in the Quran which he copied from the Bible and other sources. And he says, Allah cast Satan from heaven because he is proud. But Allah himself is proud? Hmm. Quran 16, 29. So enter the doors of hell, abide in it forever, so evil is the dwelling place for the proud. All the proud will go to hell. And I guess Allah will be in hell too. Therefore, Allah is Satan. Quran 3960, and on the resurrection day you will see those who lied against Allah and their faces are blackened. Is there not a dwelling place for the proud in hell? Exactly, that's our point. Allah is Satan. Let's move on to another thing. What about God, the God of the Bible, the God we Christian worship? It doesn't matter what language we Matthew 11, 29 says, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. That is the God of the Bible. He's not proud. 
he is humble, he is meek. Alright? Let's move on to another point which is the seditionist. Let's we'll talk about Allah and Satan in the Quran as a seditionist. Here we go. Quran 2520. And we did not send before you of the messengers except surely they ate food and walked in the streets and we made some of you to be a sedition to some others will you be patient and your lord was seen allah creates sedition among the people allah made sedition between the people he's gone another verse in the quran Quran 22 53 so he made what satan cast cast as a sedition to those who have sickness in their hearts and those who their hearts are hardened and surely the unjust are in, in far opposition. This is the God of Muhammad. That's Allah. The one who creates sedition. Let's move on to Satan in the Quran. Quran 7.27 O children of Adam, do not let Satan seduce you as he, as he has your parents out of the garden by taking their clothes off to show them their private parts. Surely he sees you and he and his host from where you cannot see see them. Surely we have made the Satan them Satan's friends to those who do not believe. Obviously, most of you do not understand what Allah said in the Quran. It's one of the ridiculous fairy tale Muhammad made in the Quran that Satan actually whispered to Adam and Eve and tells them, "Do you know you have a private part? Do you want me to show you what it's what you have and down there in your mm -mm -mm? and then, that's how he caused them to lose their clothes. I'm sorry, Adam and Eve were naked in the garden and they did not have any clothes and they never have feather afterwards. As a matter of fact, the whole entire story of the Quran is a fairy tale. But what's the point he wanna share is we is this Allah seduced, Satan seduced. Guess what? Allah is Satan. Let's move on. Next point. About the seducer. The seducer. No, wait a minute. Didn't we just do seducer? Well, in Arabic we have two different words for seducer. I put them both in English, that's why I need to cover both of them. Here we go. Quran 1134. And my advice will not profit you if I desire to advise you. If Allah was desiring to seduce you, He is your Lord, and to Him you will return. Allah seduce the believers. Allah seduce the people. Quran chapter uh, 15. Let's read what God He said, My Lord, because you seduced me, I will surely adorn to them on earth and will surely seduce all of them. See, it's amazing in one verse. Allah seduced Satan and Satan will seduce the rest of the people. Allah and Satan are equal of seducing us. You know what? I believe Allah is Satan. Let's move on to the next slide here. We're talking about the impossible, the unclean, the righteous, uh, the word righteous in Islam. Here we go. Let's talk about Allah. Quran 10, 100. And it was not for a soul to believe except by Allah's permission. And He will say the, say the uncleanness on those who will not understand. Uh, I wish we had this, uh, this thing fixed. We're cutting so many of the words outside the screen. That's fine. <laughs> Allah bring uncleanness to the people who do not understand. Wow. It's amazing. In the Quran also you see the people who understand are also the words of the creatures. So let's move on. Quran 6, 125. So whomever Allah desires to God, he opens his chest to Islam. And whomever he desires to mislead, he will make his chest extremely narrow as though he has only ascended to the heaven. Likewise, Allah made the uncleanness on those who do not believe. Allah mislead. And Allah bring uncleanness to the heart of those who did not believe. Alright? Let's move on to Quran chapter 5, verse 90. Oh, who have believe surely the wine and the gambling and the idols and the divining arrows are an abomination of Satan's work so avoid them perhaps you may prosper now notice the word an ab abomination I have here it's the same word unclean in the dictionary of three Muslim scholars we're not making this up so whatever Satan is doing is exactly what Allah is doing bring prejudice on the people bring uncleanness on the people so let's move on another character which is the rascal. The rascal of Allah, the rascal of Satan. Quran 259 says, those who were unjust changed the saying to what had not been said to them. So we sit down on those unjust, the rujus, is that right? A rujus. Mm -hmm. rujus <laughs> from it's the heaven because they were transgressors. It's a word wrath. It's another non-Arabic word of Syriac origin in the Quran. Let's move on to the next verse. Quran 7162. So the unjust among them replaced that word with another. Not the same which had been said to them, so we sent a wrath over them from the heaven because they were unjust. Here we put the word that just in the Arabic in the meaning exactly in the English language to understand. So Allah bring righteous, bring wrath on the people who are unjust. Okay, let's see what the Quran teaches about Satan. Quran 811. 
When sleep covers you, it is, it's, it is assurance from Him, and He sent down water from the heaven on you to pur purify you by it and cause the wrath of Satan to pass from you, and that He might tie on your heart and strengthen it by your feet. Allah bring wrath, Satan bring wrath. Allah is Satan. Let's move on. One minute. The cause of forgetfulness. So when people forget, cannot remember. Quran 87, 6, 7. We will make you read, so do not forget, except for what Allah wills. Surely He knows what is proclaimed and what is hidden. So Allah causes uh, Muhammad to forget specific verses from the Quran. Here we go. Quran 2, 106. Whatever verse we abrogate or cause it to be forgotten, we bring a better verse than, than it or like it. Do you not know that Allah has might over all things? Allah causes verses of the Quran to be gone for good. Okay. This is Quran 868. And when you see those who engage in verses, so withdraw from them until they engage in another speech. And about what Satan causes you to forget. So do not sit with the unjust people for recollection. Believe it or not, Allah causes Muhammad to forget verses from the Quran. And Satan causes Muhammad to forget verses from the Quran. Allah is Satan. I don't like to use the word debate. I, I, I'm not going to address any of that, what the gentleman just said, because it, it was basically it wasn't about anything it's just words you know and what? it's a tragedy that someone who is educated will would play on the intelligence of the people like that because if we continue down that road nothing would be accomplished you know you would leave here just like you came here probably disliking somebody even more that's not the purpose of religion the purpose of religion is to unite humanity. There is no debate. There is nothing that is contentious between Muslims and Christians. We are brotherhoods. We are brothers of the faith. You can use proud, you can use all of these things, all of these words that my brother showed, but you're not learning anything from that. As people of faith, when somebody asks me, are you a Christian or Muslim? I said, no, I'm a brother, I'm a man of faith. What is the definition of faith according to the Holy Quran? It means the one who is a believer. What is the definition of a believer? One who is upright, one who is honest, one who is reliable, one who is loyal. Would each of you describe yourself? Is that part of your character? Is that part of your character? Are you reliable? Are you honest? Are you respectful? But well, that's what a Muslim is, the nature of the human being. The term, the term Muslim, so just so you know, the term Muslim, it does not relate to a religion per se. It is the nature of obedience to God. Allah says to us in the Quran, set your face toward the religion being upright the nature in which God has created everyone. That is the true religion, but many of you understand not. So as Muslims, we're not trying to get you to the mosque per se, we just want you to be a better person. Because that's the nature of religion. As far as Allah being God, you know, if you look at all of the modern conveniences that we, that we have today, that we enjoy, those modern conveniences, science, philosophy, mathematics, medicine, and on and on and on, they came from the minds of men up on the Quran, that studied Quran. <laughs> if you go back, and this is easy enough to prove now, you ain't got to go to the Quran, you ain't got to go to the Bible. Just go and read uh, the, the European <laughs> Renaissance. Because this, the European Renaissance is where enlightenment from the world came from. And the European Renaissance was based upon the Muslims who went into Europe and reawakened the sciences of the world. That is how society prospered to where it is now. And that came from God. Jesus says in the Bible, I am not God, but God is the one who sent me. So yes, Muslims do say Jesus is not God. But Jesus says, but God says that uh, Jesus, Jesus, Muslims believe that God, that Jesus is a word from God that was sent to the world by God. 
This is the, I'm, I'm not trying to refute anything my brother said. You know, he just didn't say too much that would benefit anybody. My purpose is to is to establish a better understanding as to who we are to each other. Allah says in the Holy Quran, He says, this brotherhood is one brotherhood. Moses, Jesus, Abraham, Muhammad, Isaac, uh, Adam, uh, 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 prophets that you know of and prophets that you don't know of. So we're not here to relive the Crusades. You know, we got to get beyond that, people. We got to live together. God says in the Holy Quran, any who does good and does deeds of righteousness, be he Muslim, Christian, or Jew, on him is no fear, nor shall he grieve. The person who is the enemy is the one who's selling dope. The one who's running the economy up so that we can't make a decent living, can't pay our house, no, can't feed our children. That's the enemy. Why are we around here trying to, trying to misrepresent the Holy Quran? You, I'm not going to misrepresent the Bible because I love the Bible. I studied the Bible. I teach the Bible. Allah says to us, he says, this is the book. It, it is guidance. No, for sure, without doubt. And then he says this, further down. He says, uh, those who will see the hereafter, who believe in the unseen, steadfast in prayer, and spin out of what we have provided for them, and who believe in the, in the revelation sent to thee, meaning this book, and sent before thy time. You cannot be a Muslim unless you believe in Jesus. You cannot be a Muslim unless you believe in God or, or in the Bible. But no, we do not believe that Jesus is God because Jesus never said he was God. Jesus said, I come on the authority of the Father who sent me. When Satan was tempting Jesus up in the mountain, Jesus said, man does not live by bread alone, but what? Every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. If you're going to believe that Jesus is God, then that means that they killed God for three days. What was the world doing while, while God was dead for three days? You know, we have to think. We have to use our minds, people. We have to use our minds. You know, and stop letting people come in and, and, and mislead us. We offer a hand of brotherhood to the pastor. And anybody, let's work together to rid society of corruption. Let's work together to improve the everyday needs of everybody. I am an American. I was born here. Mississippi is my home. Muslims are here and we ain't going nowhere. We ain't asking nobody permission to be here because we're here. You know, this is a Judeo-Christian Islamic country. And we might as well, you can shake your head if you want to, but you might as well get rid of, get, get used to that idea because we're here and we're going nowhere. We are, but we are here to establish truth. We're here to establish faith. Last but not least, let me say this before my time is up. You, know, you may hear about ISIS and Al-Qaeda and all of these, but unless you study the Holy Quran and read what the book says itself, then you will, will not know that what these people are doing is not part of, uh, of this religion. Allah says, fight in the cause of Allah. Uh, let me find this verse real quick. God tells us that we should fight in the cause of Allah, but uh, I heard the, the brother say um, in, in Surah 2, 106, uh, some of our uh, scripture we changed. As Muslim, we teach that this is a book for all generations. The Holy Quran will not be changed. It will not be interpolated or anything like that. But it is the word of God, the pure word of God. And since it can't be changed, that means that it's the word of God. The message is an evolutionary uh, 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 message. Right here, the word, the word for uh, for fight, 
back when this word was first re revealed to the prophet, the word katala, katala, it's an Islamic term, a Quranic term. It was, it did mean fight, but it also means to study. It means to equip yourself. It means to be able to deal with people on an intellectual basis. So that means that the time for physical warfare is over and the time for intellectual exchange is present. And that's what we are now. This is what we call the battlefield in order to help each other understand each other uh, better so that we can live. First of all, I will work and every Christian that I know will work with anyone to better this country. But it's not... This is, we're here not about living together. We're not here about the economy. We're not here about dope. We're, about, we're here about the truth of who God is. The nature, I will agree, agree with him on one thing. He said the nature of religion is to be a better person. But I want everybody here, if you hear nothing else, you hear this. Religion to make you a better person will take you to hell. Amen. Because without Jesus, it doesn't matter. Well, uh, let's move on with our study here. You see a little bit about the nation of Allah that He is the one who sent revelation to mankind. Quran 21 7. And we did not sin before you except men whom we revealed to them. So Allah revealed to all the prophets who came before Muhammad according to that verse. Let's see what Allah Quran said. Quran 6 121. And surely the Satans will revere, reveal to their friend that they debate you. Okay, Satan reveal. And another, another one very important, Quran 22. And we did not send before you any messenger nor prophet except that when he wishes, Satan cast in his wishes. Satan cast in the wishes of Muhammad. That is by the satanic verses, which we'll get to it later if we have the time. But I'm sorry, not one prophet in the Bible ever received a verse from Satan, as Muhammad claimed. So Allah gave revelation, Satan gave revelation. Allah is Satan. Let's move on. Quran 488. What is the matter with you that you divided into two groups concerning the hypocrites when Allah was cast them off because of what they have learned? Do you desire to, to guide those whom Allah has led astray? Allah yeah. led people astray. You see what Muhammad said about Satan. 2815. And he entered the city at a time when its inhabitants did not notice him. He found in it two men fighting. This is, is of the sect of, this, of his enemies. So he was called for help, for help by the one of his sect against him who were his enemies. So Moses struck him and so he killed him and said, This is of Satan's work. Surely he is an, an, obvious. an obviously misleading enemy. Of course, when you read the story about Moses in the Quran, it's another fairy tale that's not fit with the story of Moses in the Bible. But here we see Satan misled Moses and Allah misled other people. Allah is Satan. Let's move on. How about the misleader? Mm. Quran 334.24 Say who provides you from the heavens and the earth. Say Allah and surely we or you are guided or in obvious error. Muhammad did not even know if he is guided or he is on obvious error. How about the true leader in the Bible? Our God. Proverbs 5, uh, 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He shall direct your paths. See the difference between the God of the Bible and Allah, the God of Muhammad? Alright, let's move on. The glamorizer. You know what? Skip this one. I don't, I don't care about this one. Let's move to the schemer. Here we go. Allah in the Quran. 86.13 Surely this is a divisive word and it is not a, a joke. Surely they are scheming a scheme and I am scheming a scheme. Allah is the Quran say I scheming a scheme. Okay, how about this one? And I will wait on them. Surely my scheme is firm. Here is the difference between the scheme of Allah and any other scheme. Allah scheme is firm. Let's see what Allah said about Satan in the Quran. 476 Those who believe engage in war for the sake of Allah and those who became infidels engage in war for the sake of idolatry. So engage in war against the friends of Satan. Surely the scheme of Satan was weak. Satan scheme, Allah scheme. The difference is Allah's scheme is a little bit stronger than Satan. Alright? Therefore we have to come to the conclusion. Allah is Satan. How about the deceiver? Another word very close to schema in the Arabic language. We read in the Quran. And they deceived and Allah deceived 
And this is my favorite. And Allah is the best deceiver. No kidding. You know what the Quran is talking about here? Allah deceived all of us Christians the last 2,000 years by making somebody look like Jesus and that somebody down the cross. If this Allah is God, I will take my shoes off on and hop over his head and I'll beat him in the day of judgment. Why? Because he made me and all my ancestors to be persecuted by the Muslims because we believe in a lie. He planned it against us. The best deceiver Allah. But obviously, I don't believe that my God is a deceiver. How about this one? Surely the hypocrites deceive Allah and He deceives them. How about this one? So to Allah, all the deception, He knows. How about this one? Are they secure from the deception of Allah? So no one can be secure from the deception of Allah except the... The losing people. The losing right. people. Hey, let's go now to the Quran. How much we learn about the Quran that Satan is a deceiver? Hmm. Go ahead. In 23 verses of the Quran, the word deceiver is used. Never once referring to Satan, always Allah. Can you imagine that? Another people, of course, Allah and other people. But how about the true understanding of the Bible? What the Bible said about Revelation 20:10, the devil, who is Satan who deceived them was cast in the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. So I know from the Bible, praise God, that the devil is a deceiver. My God is not a deceiver. That's about the uh, glamour life. It makes things look beautiful for the purpose of attract people to sin. And we decree to the children of Israel in the book, twice you will vandalize on the earth and you will be lifted to a big height. It was a decree of Allah for the children of Israel to sin. Can you imagine that? Allah wants the sin to happen. How about this one? Quran 17, 16. And if we desire to destroy a village, we command its affluence so they live in transgression in it. Can you imagine that? Allah wants to destroy a city or a village. So what He does? He makes the leaders of the city sin. Therefore, He can come back and punish the city. Wow. What a great Allah. Satan. Here we go. Quran 24, 21. Oh, you have believed. Do not follow the steps of Satan. And whoever follows the steps of Satan so surely is commanded with indecency and the evil. That is exactly the description of Satan on the Quran. It is the same scripture of Allah as we read it previously. Here we go. Satan promises you pro poverty and commands you with indecency. And Allah promises you forgiveness from himself and bounty. And Allah large knowing. And now when we look at the word indecency and we look at the word... Uh, Transgression or vandalize, it is almost the same word in the Arabic language when you go to the root of this word. Dictionaries, Muslim scholars assure us that's exactly what it is. Alright? Let's move on. Allah and Satan. Together. Quran 19, working together. Go ahead. Quran 1983. Yeah, this is where they work together. Have you not seen what we send the that we send the Satans against the infidels to incite them incitingly? Can you imagine? God sent the demons, God sent the Satan to incite us. I'm sorry. That's not my God. Here you go. Quran 17. He said, Be gone, so whoever of them follows you, so surely hell will be your reward and an ample reward. And entice such of them as you can with your voice and assault them with your horsemen and your footmen. Be their partner in the money and the children and make them promises that Satan will not promise them anything except pride. I believe Satan is really obeying Allah's word for everything Satan has done. Satan is fulfilling the, the God of Islam will for all humanity. I'm sorry, this cannot be God. How about what the Bible said about God? The real God of the Bible. James 1, 13 and 14. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil. Nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. His own desires. Amen to that. Let's move on something else. The um, final destination. Yeah, very, very important. You go. Listen. Quran 11, 119, I will surely fill hell with the jinn and the people together. That's Allah speaking in the Quran. That's His desire for us. Next one. And if we had, this is still Him speaking, if we had willed, we would surely give to every soul its guidance, but the word which has gone forth from me was established, I will surely fill hell with jinn and people together. Can you imagine that? That is the wishes of Allah, the God of Muhammad. To send people to hell. By the way, if you worship Jesus Christ, you will go to hell. That's the teaching of the Quran. Do you know where Jesus Christ is right now? Our dear Muslim friend will tell us they believe in Jesus. According to Islam, Jesus is right now burning in hell. Why? Because according to the Bible, he accepted the worship of others, other humans. All right. One last thing here. We're going to get here. Go ahead. Uh, what the Bible said. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, but as some men count slackness, but as long suffering to us, not willing that any should perish, but that all 
all should come to repentance. See the difference? Allah, the God of Muhammad, He had a desire from the beginning when He created Adam and Eve to fill hell with people. But the God of the Bible, you know why Jesus did not come back yet? Because I believe someone here tonight need to know Jesus as Lord and Savior. And that Amen. someone Amen. will be saved forever. Amen. And I release the rest of the time. <coughs> Good evening to all of you. I'm a very simple-minded individual. And I thank God for making me one. I'm not an educated person other than what education I have received from God. And I hope what I have to say and read to you tonight will make you think about people's coming to this country from other places and going to teach you something about your own religion. And they couldn't teach their own in their own country. And this was causing a lot of confusion and they bring it here to America. And this should be stopped because every one of us, Christian and Muslim, supposed to be one family. Not two family, one family coming from out of Adam and Eve. Not Adam and Steve. Amen. I want to read something to you as I go through this here. When it comes to be the Son of God. If it is said that Jesus was born without a human father, Adam was also born. Indeed, Adam was, was born without either father or mother. But now he was a human being. In God's sight, Jesus was as dust, just as Adam was, our humanity is. The greatness of Jesus arose from the divine command, be. For after that, he was more than dust, a great spiritual leader and teacher. Everything you read in that Bible, when it comes to the first uh, Genesis, it said, let there be light, let there be this, let there be that. The same way with our birth. God said, let there be another human being in my mother's womb. And she didn't even know it was there, but that God did. And, and worked with it and brought it into existence. You see me now. By the word, be. And it is. That's all he got to do. He said, be. And it come into existence. Don't forget that. And Jesus... What made him greater than us, God chose him to teach and to be a great leader in the spiritual form. He said, you can't get to God unless you come through me. What he said, you got to learn some spiritual insight, some spiritual knowledge, some wisdom in order to for you to get him there. And you got to. That's all you can do. It. Jesus asked Philip how to show him the appearance of face of God to the disciples, which is not possible. You should believe in God by admiring his creation. And Jesus himself was created by God, he said. Look at John 4.24. Read it for yourself. Get to know your book. Some of us don't know our book. God is a spiritual and John 5 37 you have neither heard his voice at any time we've seen Jesus people seen Jesus they hear them talk I, I believe you would agree with that not seen his shape how can you see a spirit what they saw was Jesus and not God. See, Jesus is it's no way could be God. It's, it's, it's impossible. God gonna put himself inside of a human being. He greater than that. Ain't no human being can see God with his naked eyes. They seen Jesus walk this earth here. He greater than that. Also, Paul said, 1 Timothy 6:16. Whom no man has seen, not can see. So what you can see is never God. So I'm not here to try to get you to uh, change your mind. Anything. I just want you to know your book. Compare it now with Luke 1, 26 and 27. Read in Mark 
12, 29, what Jesus himself said. And Jesus answered him, The first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, thy Lord, our God, is one Lord. Jesus said that. I love Jesus. I follow Jesus in this here. This is coming from the Bible. I know Jesus spoke these words. He would have never told anybody that he was God himself. But, you know, we do a lot on Scripture. We try to get to be seen. I may want a little money from you. Or you got some. I'll do anything I got to do if I'm a fool to try to twist the word. But now can you twist this here? <coughs> First Timothy. Second and five. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men. The man Christ. Jesus Christ came to wake us up to what God has said. He didn't ever say he was God himself. He came to wake us up because we had went to sleep. But we didn't want to be bothered with him. Why? He was homeless. He didn't have no nice car. He didn't have no a uh, home. He was homeless. How many people right today see homeless people pass and they're passing up? You may be going through a test. He was homeless. Don't forget that. Last. First Corinthians 14 33 says, For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace as in all churches of the saints. Should it? Should it? The author of confusion is the Satan. To say Allah, I'm not no Arab. I was born here on the United States of America. I don't need no Arab to come over here and tell me what I need to know about my God. But now if you bring me the book, you got Arab and you got English. Some of the Arab people are supposed to have been translated in English. Well, I'm an English speaking person. I'm not coming to you with no Arab. I got to get to you the way it is. You know and I know. We all are a miracle of God. In the wounds of my mother, God created the seed that was in my father to go into my mother to chose me to be on earth where you see me today. God did that unseen. You got to believe in the unseen world. If you don't believe in the unseen world, there's something wrong with you. Do you know it? It ain't one of y'all sitting in here right now can say that you had something to do with who your father would be. You have every one of you here right now and I'm all confused, the devil himself. Every one of us in here right now had nothing to do with the color of your skin that God chose you to be. Not one. I didn't have nothing to do with it. God created what he wanted to in my mother's womb. God, if he want me to be poor and don't have it, so what? I'm thankful to be alive to come through this world because it's all a test. We are what you call travelers. We are just only traveling through this world. But now, what was the purpose of God creating us? Can't tell. Me. What was the purpose of God creating us from the door? You can't tell. Me. God said the only reason why He created mankind was to get Him to know Him and worship Him. That's religion. But we get religion twisted and turned around. If you give yourself more to worshiping yourself in the mirror, that's your religion. Whatever you give yourself over to most of the time, that's your religion. Muslims supposed to stay in contact with Allah, with Allah 24 7. Because you never know when you're going to die. A Muslim submit their will to God. Their will. That's all. And if you submit your will, you're a Muslim too. For as Christian, I love you. I have respect for you because you are traveling. And through the book, the Quran, he didn't tell you that God said in that book, 
nearest to the Muslim are the Christians. That's what God said in the Holy Believe Bible. in Allah to be their God? Because Muhammad said so. And what is the second witness for that? Not another witness. It is Muhammad alone. Even though the Bible is very clear, you have to have two or three witnesses. Now, we ask the question, can Muhammad be a prophet? According to the Quran. Not to the Bible, according to the Quran. Let's read a couple of verses here together. Quran 45, 16. And indeed, we gave the book and the wisdom and the prophethood to the children of Israel. And we provided them with good things and they were favored right. by the world. Allah gave the children of Israel privilege. What the privilege? Three things. The book, the wisdom, and the prophethood. And that's how they are favored above everybody in the world. Alright? Another person of the Quran. We read. And we granted him Isaac and Jacob and we assigned the prophethood and the book to his descendants. Now that's the question. Was Muhammad one of the children of Israel? No. Jacob. The answer is no. Therefore, we come to the conclusion Muhammad cannot be a prophet. Now, let's look quickly at some of the things about Muhammad which sadly most Muslims do not know. For example, even until the age of 40, Muhammad did not know that he would be a prophet of Allah. So what was Muhammad until the age of 40? Lost. Alright, here we go. Quran 93, 7, and he found you lost, Dalan, so he guided you. Muhammad was lost, was Dalan, so Allah guided him. For how long? For 40 years. Here we go, another verse. Guide us to the straight Sarat, the way of those whom you have graced, the Muslims, not those whom the wrath is against, the Jews, nor the lost ones, the Christians. Notice here that the Christians are lost as much as Muhammad was lost before he was guided by Allah. How about this next verse? Quran 4, 1, 16, surely, uh, surely Allah will not forgive the parting with himself. That is the most dangerous sin in Islam, al-shirk. What was Muhammad doing for 40 years? Who was living shirk? Because he was worshipping idols, like his mama, like his baba, like his grandparents. The mo all people of Christ were worshipping idols. And so was Muhammad. He was lost. Here we go. Quran 42, 52. And likewise, we revealed to you a spirit from our command. You did not know of what is the book, nor the faith. Muhammad did not know what is a book or a faith. He did not have faith for 40 years. Muhammad claimed that he had a vision of a spirit while alone in a cave. And he conf confused and afraid, he ran to his wife, Khadijah, and she convinced him that it was the angel Gabriel and not a demon, because he thought it was a demon. Who made Muhammad a prophet? It was his wife, Khadijah. He actually was terrified. He saw he is seeing demons. As a matter of fact, we have plenty of information about Muhammad as a demon possessed. Okay, here we go. Muhammad said, according to Ibn Ishaq's biography on page 26. Yeah, go ahead. Ishaq's. Mm. Two men in white clothes came to me with a golden basin full of snow, and they took me and they split open my body, then they took my heart and split it open, and took out of, out of it a black clot, which they flung away. Then they washed my heart and my body with that, that snow until they made me pure. Alright, how about this next statement here? Thinks about Muhammad. What happened to Muhammad when he received the revelation? The first thing. Allah speaks from the veil according to Quran 42.5. Here is the verse actually. 51. And it was not for a human that Allah should speak with him except by revelation or from a, behind a veil. Well, or let's, let's, let's stop you for a second. When you read the Quran, Allah spoke to Adam. How different he said a minute ago. That no one can see eyes with a naked eye. Adam walked with Allah, talked with Allah. Allah touched him. He has seen Allah. The problem is we cannot see God because of our sin. Adam before sin, he was in a fellowship with God like you and I sitting right now. And so is Jesus Christ. He is God. He has seen God because he's the only sinless man. As Adam was before falling in sin, so Jesus. But he would see that Allah tells us in the Quran that... No one, Allah does not speak to anyone except behind the veil. But Allah the Quran spoke to Moses. Allah the Quran spoke to Abraham directly. Why in the case of Muhammad, Allah did not speak to him directly. He spoke to him through angel Jibreel, which I believe just another demon. Let's move on. Second thing, what happened to Muhammad when he received his revelation? He, Allah searched into Muhammad's heart. That's how Muhammad, this is just something comes to his heart and these are the verses which we read in the Quran. During his sleep. Why sleep? Allah speak to him and give him the... From the angel Gabriel, as an angel or a human, and with a very loud voice of a bell. By the way, Muhammad in the Hadith assured us that the voice of a bell is from Satan. 
And he received his revelation with a loud voice of bell. It used to hurt his ears so bad. All right? With the sound of bees in his face. When you get close to Jesus, Muhammad's face, you hear this zzzz. Okay? With a very heavy sweat. Okay. With his weight becoming very heavy. To the point when he arrived on the camel and the revelation came on him, the camel would fall on the ground. All right? With great suffering. Okay. With the redness of his face. Mm hmm and with a voice like a babe camel, mm -hmm. and with a moving of the tongue fast. All right. That's why Allah told them in the Quran, don't rush to speak the words of the Quran. Not one prophet in the Bible ever, ever had that experiences. It's only Muhammad. Why? Because I believe that is the, the work of the demonic spirit. As you see the Bible, you see these things happen to people who are demon possessed. All right. Go ahead, brother. Quoting from the Hadith, in 9-1-11 That's Sahih Bukhari, the correct hadith, go ahead. But after a few days, Waraka died and the divine inspiration was also paused for a while and the prophet became so sad as we have heard that he intended several times to throw himself from the tops of high mountains and every time he went up to the top of the mountain in order to throw himself down. Muhammad tried to commit suicide at least according to Sahih Muslim three times, Sahih Bukhari, three times. He got, why? Because after Waraka ibn Nufal died, that is a monk, who is the cousin of his wife Khadija. When Waraka died, the revelation of Allah stopped. I believe Waraka Nubal have a great job to do with Muhammad's Quran. Why? If you read the Quran, see many of the stories of the Bible in the Quran in a corrupt form. You can get my new book, Exposing the Truth about the Quran, the Revelation share. All the Quran is corrupted. Why? In the stories of the Bible, yeah, you hear about it. same names as the Bible, but it's a completely different story. But when Waraka died, the revelation stopped. Muhammad tries three times to commit suicide. Alright? And Allah obviously stopped him by Angel Gabriel. How about this next time here? So every time Gabriel would appear before him and say, Oh Muhammad, you are indeed Allah's apostle in truth. Alright? So I need to give it a stop him from committing suicide. How about in this case here? That's obviously from the life of Muhammad. So I, Muhammad, read it and Gabriel departed from me and I woke from my sleep and it was though these words were written on my heart. Oh now, the Tibri is telling us what Muhammad said here. A Tibri is one of the top four Muslim scholars. Now one of God's creatures was more hateful to me than than an ecstatic poet or a man possessed. I could not even look at them. I thought, woe is me, poet, or possessed. Never shall Karashi Quraysh, Quraysh, Quraysh people, the say Muhammad this of me. Yeah. I will go to the top of the mountain and throw myself down that I may kill myself and again rest. You have to understand that Muhammad is poet, the demon possessed, some. And Muhammad is saw him to be a demon possessed. That's why this is the second occasion, or second reason, why Muhammad tried to commit suicide. Let's move on. Can Muhammad be a prophet? Listen. 8122. And, and, and by the way here, I'm, I'm just going to quote you two verses. The Quran is loaded by many verses where Allah and Muhammad assure every Muslim that Muhammad is not a demon possessed. And your companion is not a demon possessed. And indeed he saw him in the clear eyes and he was not withholding anything about the unseen and is not the words of a stone Satan. He's talking about he saw Gabriel, alright? And by the way, only Muhammad saw Gabriel. He was alone in the cave, he's alone with Gabriel, he's alone with everything. No second witness. 6941, it is not the saying of the poet, little is what you believe, and it is not the saying of the soothsayer, little is what you remember. I'm saying here, Muhammad's son, that the Quran is not... So I have everything to do with demons. It's just the truth of Allah. Go ahead. Magic was worked on Allah's apostles so that he used to think that he had sexual relations with his wives while he actually had not. By the way, that's written in Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Muslim, many locations all over, as you see on the screen. Here we go. The apostle of Allah fell ill. He was bewitched about women and food. There was 11 knots in the hair from the comb. The two chapters, number 113 and 14. Go ahead, finish it were revealed to him. No sooner did the Apostle of Allah recite a verse than a knot loosened. When all of them were loosened, he regained his urge for food and women. The greatest man, the greatest prophet of all, Muhammad, was demon possessed. He was bewitched. He used to think he's having sex with his wife, but he didn't. He stopped having sex and he stopped eating. And then when he did this uh, sorcery's work, uh, the magic work, and he read these two wonderful chapters, chapter 113, chapter 114, this nuts was losing from his hair and he became normal again and he started having sex with his wives and he started eating again. What a great prophet from which we can learn about Allah, Satan. Wow. <laughs> This is my first time ever encountering, encountering uh, and I must admit, 
I myself have to go back and study more. Amen. 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 I must admit, Amen. we used to have a scholar that was like that brother right there. His name was Ahmad Didai. And nobody wanted to face him. But my, my thing is, calling Allah uh, the Shaitan or the Satan, I noticed that in the Bible, I have a, uh, a table of uh, false gods that are mentioned in the Bible. And I notice that all of these false gods are mentioned by name. But if Allah is Satan, why is not Allah mentioned directly by name in the Bible? In the book of Kings, 2 Kings 17.31, there's a description of a sun god in there, which are people, uh, the Sebephorites, worshipped. Then you have Ammon, which is in Jeremiah 46.25, who's also a sun god. And a fertility guard named Asherah, who was worshipped by the people in Canaan, in the book of Judges 6, 25, 26, 28, 30, and 36. And the list goes on. But never once is a law mentioned as a Satan or even a false god in the book. You know, the brother is uh, giving verses in the uh, Holy Quran. And it, it seems to be contradicting each other. Well, I know in the Bible, from my own personal studies, when you open the book of Genesis, and it talks about the story of Cain and Abel, and Adam and Eve, of course. And Cain killed Abel, so they left three people upon the earth. And Cain was uh, cursed out of the garden. He was banished from the garden. And he went to a land called Nod and found himself a wife. And I asked myself, how did that happen if there's only three people left on earth? So someone said, well, uh, he had a sister. He had sex with his sister. But he didn't have a sister. They had another son. His name was Seth. In one part, they said that Jesus was the only begotten son. And then when you go to the book of Psalms, it says that David was the only begotten son. Numerous contradictions and errors like that. But they say that Allah is a Satan. My question is, if the Bible has, if the Quran has so many contradictions, and that makes Allah Satan, then what about the Bible? Who did that? What about all those Christians that came out of people that say they love Jesus and they follow him? They came out of the East, over in Europe. They came to North America. They exterminated practically all the Native Americans. They brought all those black slaves out of Africa who weren't in bondage for 100 years, 200 years, but for more than 350 years. And they did it in the name of Christ. They called themselves Christians. Today, these same people, they call themselves Christians. They kill unarmed black men. Innocent. They kill unarmed black women. Innocent. They call themselves Christians. They go in movie theaters with guns and they kill up a lot of people. But everybody is always want to talk about Muslims and speak out against the Muslim. What about these Christians in this country that's been killing people for years? North Carolina, you go in a church and the people pray for you and you kill nine people. One more time. Here we go. I'd like to get to some very important passage here. We really, my heart is for the next part here as we're going to see the real problem we have in the world. There are plenty of Muslims in the world who know nothing about Islam. There are plenty of peaceful, loving Muslim people in the world because they're not Muslim or because they practice taqiyya. What is taqiyya? Please visit this first one. Believers do not take the infidels for friends rather than the believers. And whoever does this, so he has nothing to do with Allah, except that you should guard yourself from them cautiously. Thank you. Thank you. Allah commands the Muslim believers, not the radical, not the extremists, never to take infidels for friends. But he is given us exception. Except. Except that you should guard yourself from them. Now, what is the interpretation of that, of that verse by the great Muslim scholar, Jalani? He said, you can take the infidels as friends, Hey, the red line, if you can see the red line here, you can take them as a friend, 
with your tongue, not with your heart. باللسان دون القلب. We have to قبل عيسى الإسلام. And that is before the might of Islam. And this can be practiced. So whoever lives in a country is not strong in it. So in America, we have wonderful Muslim people because they're practicing taqiyya, protecting themselves, or because they do not know nothing about Islam. How about the peaceful Muslim in America? Go ahead. So do not be weak and do not call for peace when you have the upper hand. When Muslims do not have the upper hand in any country, they're weak. They're peaceful. It's exactly how Muhammad started in Mecca. But when Muslims receive the upper hand, they are barbaric. They are savage. As you see them right now in Iraq and Syria. Or, as a matter of fact, all over Europe. Or, few cases here in America. Here's the interpretation of that verse by the great Muslim scholar Ibn Kasir. He said, do not be weak of fighting the enemy. Do not call them for peace. Do not have cease of fighting with them, with the infidel. In the case of your strings, when you have large number, of weapon and people. If the infidels have strength and have large number of weapon and people, you can do exactly as the Messenger of Allah did, that is Muhammad, with the infidels of Christ. Infidels of Christ did sin. And he had peace with them for 10 years. And by the way, that peace did not last 10 years. Three years later, Muhammad came back to Mecca, killed the last Jew, the last Christian in Mecca, and he cleared Saudi Arabia before he died. That was Muhammad's wishes. No Jew or Christian live in the Saudi Arabia Peninsula. How about the Muslim who actually uh, you know a little bit about Islam but they don't want to get involved in killing us? I call these the hypocrite Muslim. How do I know a Muslim is a hypocrite or not? It's very simple. You give him a knife, sharp knife, and a Jew and a Christian. If he kills the Jew and the Christian, he's a good Muslim. If he refuses to kill the Jew and the Christian, he's a hypocrite. That's not my word, that's Allah's word. Go ahead, brother. And that he might know the hypocrites, and it was said to them, Come, engage in war for the sake of Allah, or contribute. They said, If we knew how to engage in war, we would have followed you. They are closer on that day to infidelity than to faith. Thank you. Here's the hypocrite. Allah will know the hypocrite by two things. You ask him to come to engage in war, or to contribute. Give money towards the war. If they say, No, we're not going to fight, because you don't give money, they are hypocrites. They are closer to infidelity than to peace. Saudi Arabia... 100% Muslim country. No hypocrites there. Why? Half of it performed jihad with their money, and the other half performed jihad with their life. And we go on here to learn a little bit about what is the punishment for the hypocrite. We see here in America people say, why in the world ISIS are killing other Muslims? Oh, that is a great evidence that they're not Muslims. No, ISIS never kill a Muslim. ISIS killing hypocrite. And here is the word of Allah to prove my point. Quran 9733 or 973, O you prophet, perform jihad, holy war, against the infidels and the hypocrites. Be harsh, harsh with them. With them. Okay. You see the word? And not only is they going to kill them, they're actually going to end in hell. Who? The hypocrite. Which one? The Muslims who refuse to contribute or perform jihad for the sake of Allah. Now let's see this video together. Salam says they're actually taught to save lives, not take them. Allah says in the Holy Quran that if you save one life, it's as if you had saved the entire human family. So, on the other side of that, if you take one life, it's like you took the life of the entire human family. <laughs> well, where is the verse that we read in the Quran? It's Quran chapter 5 and verse 32. Let's read the, the verse together. For this reason, Allah said, We inscribe for the children of Israel. Uh, he did not tell us this portion of the verse like Mr. Bush did. Four days after September 11. Bush and our dear friend here know nothing about the Quran. That verse is not written for the Muslims. That's written for the Jews, the children of Israel. What Muslim believe reading? It is actually the following verse. Quran chapter 5 and verse 33. And here is the word of Allah. Surely the word reward of those who war against Allah and his messenger and go about to vandalize of the earth is only the will only that they will be killed or crucified or have their hands and legs cut off on opposite sides or they will be banished from the earth. And that's exactly what ISIS is doing today. I love it how Muslims in the Middle East tell them ISIS, you're not Muslims, you're bad Muslims. And ISIS said, really? Let me read you what Allah said in the Quran. Killing, crucifying, cutting hands and legs opposite sides or whatever is written in the Quran, it is the true Islam. ISIS are the true virgin of Islam. If you can show me one thing ISIS is saying or doing does not fit with the word of Allah in the Quran, I would quit this message. I would, I would just like to say this, you know, uh, for those of you who came here expecting the, the, the crescent, the star and crescent and the cross, 
uh, to go back to, you know, the 12th, 13th century, I'm sorry to disappoint you, we Muslims, we about that. You know, I'm not up here to degrade anybody's scripture. You know, we acted in the nature that God has told us to act, and we and we are here, and, and the presentation that we're making now, we're not here in a screaming match, you know, to try to degrade your scripture or anything that you that you use to make your life better. You know, we're not here to try to contradict anything my brother here says. Whatever he says, that's fine with him. We are Muslim. The demeanor that you see us here with now contradicts everything you see about ISIS and all of this other stuff on TV. We're not here to call people a bunch of names and all of that. Talk about people's sex life and all of that. Prophet Muhammad was, I, could, I would encourage you to go back and study the Muslim in Spain. That's history. It's noted history. Go back and do research on your own. You can Google it. Go and study the, the, the Moors in Spain. And that would give you a really good eye-opening uh, uh, knowledge and information about, about who we are as Muslims. You know, we're people of peace. Prophet Muhammad was was uh, the uh, the combination of all of the prophets. We love and respect all of the prophets, and uh, we're not going to try to degrade any of Allah's servants. So we'll leave that up to somebody else. We're Muslim. We believe in God and the prophets. I just want to say that that's the beauty of Islam because uh, we are taught that there's two types of people in the world. And they're either your, your brothers in faith, your brothers and sisters in faith, or your brothers and sisters in, in humanity. So as far as humanity goes, I mean, it's been a positive response. Well, uh, dear friend, he has told us that in Islam, we're brother, sister in humanity, or brother, sister in faith. Well, I'm sorry, Allah the Quran said, every Christian is an infidel. As it's written in 572, infidel indeed are those who said, surely Allah is the Christ, son of Mary. That is every Christian. Allah in the Quran said in 573, infidel indeed are those who said, surely Allah is the certain three. That is every Christian. As a matter of fact, the punishment for those who are Christian according to the Quran, Quran chapter 47 verse 4, so when you meet those who became infidel, so strike the next until you have made a great slaughter among them. As a matter of fact, Allah in the Quran called the Christian and the Jews the words of the creature. Here is the word of Allah. Quran 98 verse 6. Surely those who became infidels from the people of the book, the Jews and the Christian, and the policies will abide in the fire of hell forever. Those are the words of the creatures. So when you hear the Muslim who is speaking with ignorance, they do not know even their book, or they're practicing taqayya. They are trying to make friendship with us. Tell us that we are all human, we all hold hands and sing Kumbaya. No, that's not how Muhammad and Muslim Brexit the last 1400 years. I pray that you all will take into consideration your coming into existence. And you're going to die and you're going to return back to the one that put you on this earth. And I would not like to be one that challenged any book of God. I know the tongue that he gave me got to speak for itself. Same way with you and I. Your hands, your feet, everything about your body will testify before God on the day of judgment. The Jews will argue just as he argued due to the fact Abraham had two sons, one Ishmael and one Isaac. It's been confusion between them two branches ever since. Then in the United States, get involved with it. Now we mark down in. But now the two sons, Arabs come out of one line, the Jews come out of another line. The Jews said, since you took this in Islam from us, we hate you. And God tells you in the Quran, they would tell you. They hate God. They don't hate you. They hate God. To say that God have did something of this nature here, got to be a person that hate God saying that God is Satan. You're hating God. God is God, the creator, who gave you life and death. You don't know how much longer you got on this earth here, but that he do, and everything that's said here tonight will be before you on the day of judgment. And you'll see who will win. I saw my lady. I just want to say that um, I think that, you know, uh, as I said before, um, you know, 
Allah says in the Quran, there's there's nothing in the in the Quran that says that God hates Jews or Christians or anything like that. God says in the Quran, this brotherhood is one. And he says Muhammad, Jesus, Adam, Noah, Moses, all the prophets are one. Or of ignorance. When you lump a group of people uh, into this big category because of an act that one person may have committed or several people have committed. Um, if people would take the time and study, not what other people tell them, but study what the facts are, then uh, a lot of this confusion would be cleared up. All right, it is about ignorance, and I'm glad you're here so we can get a little bit educated. Allah in the Quran, in 79 verses, command the Muslim believers to engage in war with the rest of the people of the earth. If you do not believe in Islam. It's not about the act of one person here or there. I'm talking about Muhammad and his followers. The early Muslim believers killed millions of Christians. And the killing still exists today. That's not an act of one person. So, here we go. Allah in the Quran said, War is decreed to you and it's hated by you. And perhaps you hate something that's not good for you. You love something that's evil for you. No, it is 79 verses. Here we go. Another verse. I'm sorry. That's uh, the great Muslim scholar al -Tibri. He said, we engage in war with people. Here we go. We engage in war with people with until they believe in Allah. He who believes in Allah and his messenger has protected his life and his possession from us. As for the one who disbelieves, we will engage in war with him for the cause of Allah forever. Killing him is a small matter. That is the great Muslim scholar al -Tibri, one of the top four Muslim scholars. As a matter of fact, we could have done something else here. Here's what Allah said, 914. Engage in war with them. Allah will torment them by your hand. Put them to shame. Give you victory over them. Who? All the people refuse to believe in Islam. Here we go, 95. Kill, take slave, or is he accept Islam? This is a three option in the final word of Allah, chapter 9, verse 5. That verse is known by all Muslim scholars, the verse of the sword. As we know, Islam spread all over the world from the day of Muhammad until today by the sword. <laughs> wow, this is this is something. I've never encountered anything like this, but this is definitely an experience that's going to uh, sharpen me up. Amen. Um, yeah, that's right. Amen. Um, but as far as, you know, Muhammad in waging war against everybody, as I said earlier, the Christians have done the same thing. And I'm not justifying it. No, they have. The Christians, yeah. Sorry, Muhammad has never Yeah, no, he hasn't. He hasn't. But what I'm saying, my point is this right here. When, they, when Christians came out of Europe, they went to practically every continent. South America, North America, Africa. And just just the just the just my ancestors alone, they say more than sixty million people. Sixty million. I don't think Muhammad ever exterminated sixty million people. That's just one group of people. We won't even talk about the native people that populated this land right here. I do. I don't judge religion by the people. In Christianity, there is no killing. In Christianity, love your enemy. Pray for those who persecute you. Bless those who curse you. I don't care what people do, Christian or Muslim. I judge the religion by the teaching of the book. Let's go to the Quran. Amen. In Quran 865, all your prophets provoke the believers to engage in war. Now notice what the Bible said. We're talking about killing. Let us consider one another to provoke into love and good work. What the great difference between the Quran and the Bible? Provoke the believers to kill, provoke the believers to love and to do good work. Praise God for that. One more video. Dawood Salam and Ari Hooper are both members of the Islamic community of the Gulf Coast. They believe statements like these are in response to the attacks in Paris. Hooper and Salam believe the betrayal of Muslims in society after these attacks clumps them all into one category. They tell News 25 they're mistakenly connected to these terrorists when in fact those attacks directly oppose their beliefs. Because as Muslims, as true people who adhere to the faith of Islam, we denounce terrorism. We condemn terrorism in the present, in the past, and if it continues, we'll continue to condemn it in the future. Wonderful. Guess what Allah said in the Quran? Allah commanded the Muslim never to take the Jews and Christians for friends. Quran 551. Muhammad said, do not initiate the peace to the Jews and the Christians. If you meet an them on a road, force them to its Norris alley. Be a bully. Here is the verse of the Quran. Allah is a terrorist. We will cast the terror into the heart of those who became infidels. 5, 3, 151. 8, 12. 
Allah said, I will cast her into the heart of those who became infidels. Here is the Muslim believer's action. So strike upon their necks and strike every finger from them. And here is another word. He, Allah, cast her to Bani Qurayza. They kill 7 to 800 men. They take the women and children to raise them. They inherited their homes and their land and their, land and their money. Allah's word, Quran, 33, verse 26 and 27. Uh, my brother to my right over here, you know, none of that is in the Quran that he that he related to you. Not one word. Not one word is that of that in, is in the Quran. Uh, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu when he went into Mecca, uh, he did not shed one drop of blood. Uh, when when those people who 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 had made war against him, he gave their properties back to them. He, even the enemies, he gave them their properties back. He did not shed one drop of blood. You know, you know. It, 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 had I known that we was going to be attacked like this, you know, we, I would never even be here. You know, we we came to to give you a picture of what this religion is about. Allah says in the Quran, "Don't take Jews or Christians for friends." What that is saying is this. Don't expect people to be your friend as you would be your friend. It says don't take people for your guardian friend. You know, you are a better keeper of yourself and your property than anybody else. That's what it means. It doesn't mean don't take Jews or Christians for friends. That's a lie. Uh, everything that he said about the prophet, prophethood was, yeah, chill. That was some Jews who was given prophethood, but Prophet Muhammad in the, in the Quran, Allah says, says that he is the example, the perfect example for all who wants to seek God in the hereafter. So all of this stuff about uh, the, the prophethood and these kind of things uh, are false on their face. I would encourage you all to, as I said before, study the Moors in Spain. How did uh, enlightenment come to the world? It came through the Holy Quran. I would encourage you to study, uh, go see what people like Napoleon Bonaparte and other world leaders. Go do some study on your own. See what world leaders has to say about Prophet Muhammad. Go see, go do some studies on your own. They can tell you better than I can. And enlighten yourself. You know, we're not here to, you know, to try to beat down anybody with a bunch of lies. This brother has not told the truth about anything. There is absolutely nothing that he said uh, concerning this religion and the prophet that is truthful. And why he's coming from that, that kind of, you know, that direction does nothing but cause more misery, more, more hatred. You know, the, you know, a person of Christ, a person of Christ should be trying to establish brotherhood and friendship, you know, amongst, you know, people of faith. That's what we are here for, you know, which not trying to, you know, you don't hear us coming against biblical scripture or any Christians the same way he's coming against us as Muslims. So you judge for yourself who has been the better people of faith, who has exhibited the better uh, character of, of a person of faith. You, you, you don't see us saying disparaging words or making disparaging comments about Jesus, about the Bible, about anybody. But you see us trying to offer the, the hand of brotherhood. And this is totally contradictory from what you see in the news uh, regarding Muslims. This is totally contradictory to what my brother over here is saying. We can only set the example. And if you have your eyes open, you will not listen to what is being said. You will see what is being done. You will see the conduct of the people. That's how you judge. You judge not by what people say, but you judge by what people do. God says in the Quran that the best conduct, that the best uh, believer is one who, who uh, is best in his conduct. So you, that's how you judge people. You know, they, he, brother showed so many uh, verses out of the Quran uh, with this PowerPoint, but nothing he said in that PowerPoint was relevant to anything. He started off with the word proud. That's, you know, you know, he started off with several different words. You know, Allah has created this environment 
this universe to be a just universe. And 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 when God says that uh, he is the best uh, planner, Satan plans and God plans. Uh, Satan, when, when, when people devise a corrupt plan and put it out in the, in the atmosphere or in the universe, then the corruption turns back on them. God is not sitting around wiping his lips to try to see who's gonna, who he can deceive. God has made this universe a just universe. And if you come into the universe, and try to commit something that is unjust, then it'll come back on you. That's what that means. You believe in that too. It's the same exact thing as reap what you sow. It's the same thing. You're going to reap what you sow. And when it said that Satan makes a plan, the wrongdoers makes a plan, plot, and, and God makes a plot, you know, and but God is the best of deceivers, it, it only means you're going to reap what you sow. That's exactly what it means. Nothing more, nothing less. And all of you believe in that the same as we do. So uh, uh, I encourage you all, you know, to stop listening to, to uh, people who mean you no good. You know, listen to people who talk like people of faith, not people who come to you and deceive you with uh, 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 verses that they take out of Scripture. Some of you will never believe what I'm, what I'm saying. That's on you. You know, there's no compulsion in religion. You can't make anybody believe anything they don't want to believe. So, you know, if you're a good Christian, by all means, stay a good Christian. I want to be a good Muslim. I'm going to stay that. But we are brothers and sisters in the faith. Thank you so much. Look, if you notice, he, he changed from using Allah to God. And I want you to understand that is that is a way of deception. He wants you to stop thinking about the fact that it is about Allah. This will be, it's being recorded. Lord, I see cameras everywhere. You can go back and look up the Quran verses that we've used. We've used the Quran because if we didn't use the Quran, they would have said, well, we don't know what the Quran says. We've showed them. Last night he said, you need to have be able to speak the Arabic language. You need to be able to, to, be able to translate it for yourself. Hence, my brother here, born and raised in Egypt, his, his first language is Arabic, just like we said. Uh, but just a couple of things. Mr. Salam brought up twice, and I, I didn't think, say anything the first time. Listen to me, please. This is not about slaves. This is not about slave owners. This is not about killing black men. This is not about killing black kids, black anything. This is not black and white. And I take offense to that it was even, that it was even brought up in this church that this was about black and white anything. This is about God. This is about who God is. This is the most important question that you will ever ask yourself and ever answer in your whole life. And to break it down to think that it is about race or racism... Is appalling. Spain. In Spain, we have more battles than any other country in the world. There are more European Spanish people slaughtered by the hand of the Muslim in Spain for over all the hundreds of years. And our friends tell us it was beautiful in Spain and it will be beautiful in Mississippi. No, it is not. That will never be. One more thing. I want to go. I got. I got some stuff. I've been. Oh, I'm sorry. I saw you finish. I've been holding back over I'm here. I saw you finish. I'm sorry. <laughs> Look. The, they, they talked about that Jesus was never said He was the Son of God. People never talked about He was God or the Son of God. It, it's not hard. If you go back to John 8, 24, it said, I, say, I said therefore to you that you shall die in your sins, for unless you believe that I am, the same I am that's from the Old Testament, I am, you shall die in your sins. Exodus, here it is. And God said to Moses, I am who I am. That's His name. John 8, 58, Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, before I... Abraham was born, I am. All right. Another very good important point, by the way, he said, when Jesus died on the cross, who is controlling the world? Yeah, the Father and the Holy Spirit. It's not just God is in Jesus. When Jesus died, the whole world will stop. John 9, 37 says, Jesus said to him, you have both seen me, and he is the one who is talking with you. And he said, Lord, I, let me back up. John 9, 35. Jesus heard that he had put him out and finding him, he said, do you believe in the Son of Man? And he answered, 
And who is he, Lord, that I may believe in him? Then he said, you have seen him, and he is the one who is talking to you. Lord, I believe. And he said he worshipped him. And last, Romans 10 says, For whoever will call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Paul is talking about Jesus Christ. Not just God the Father. He is talking about Jesus Christ. And he said, Whosoever shall believe in Him shall be saved. Listen to me, friends. In the end, I want you to understand the decision about Jesus Christ must become very personal. Who do you say He is? Amen. They say He is a great prophet. Who do you say He is? When everything is fairly considered and we're left with only a few options concerning Christ, He is either a liar, He has either told people that He was the Son of God, He either proclaimed that He was the Son of God, He either taught in the name of God. Perhaps He wasn't telling the truth at all. I don't know. I do know, but as far as you're concerned, is He a liar or is He not? If He's a liar, I want you to understand that He is the biggest and most successful liar in the history of all mankind. But he could be a lunatic, I guess. If you want to be a little more charitable to him, you don't want to call him a liar. Well, maybe he was just a little bit crazy. Could it be that he was telling the truth in his own mind? But you see, if that's the case, you, he's no better than Napoleon that deserved to be locked away in asylum. The other, than, then the other thing is, is he Lord? Is he Lord? If the first two alternatives do not suit you, that is the one that we're left with. A man said the things Jesus said was either a liar, a lunatic, or Lord. But if He is the Lord from heaven, listen to me, then you dare not remain neutral. You must give some account of how you respond. Amen. Now, real quick, there may be this fourth thing. This is the fourth alternative that we find ourselves in here today. And it's popular with many people. It says that sometimes we look and we say, well, when I look at Jesus, I see the greatest moral teacher the world has ever known. I told you a while ago, trying to be a moral person, trying to be a good person will lead you to hell. And that is the truth. He may or he may not be the Son of God. But what is important is that you... That you you may say he may or not be the Son of God, but what's important is to follow his moral teaching. That is not compatible with the New Testament picture of Jesus Christ, and it doesn't present him that way. C.S. Lewis, he said this, I'm trying to prevent anyone saying the really foolish thing that people often say that I'm ready to accept Jesus as a great moral teacher, but I don't accept him as God. That's the one thing that we must not say. Do you understand that? A man who's merely a man and said the sort of things Jesus would not be, he wouldn't be a great moral teacher. If he's a liar, how could he be a great moral teacher? If he's crazy, how could he be a great moral teacher? He would either be that lunatic. Listen, that's to putting yourself in the same position if he said, I'm a tree. If he's not Lord, listen, you must either make the choice. You, must, you can either shut him up for a fool, or you can, you can spit on him or kill him as a demon, or you can fall at his feet as God. But I want you to understand, understand something. Do not, we cannot come with any patronizing nonsense about his being a great human teacher, because he didn't leave that open to us. He said he was Lord, and you either accept that or you reject it. Amen. All right. By the way, he said that uh, the word makara is dabara, which deceive is planned. That is propaganda in the other English translation of the Quran. The word in the Quran is makara, which means deceive. Uh, Quran 2 to 56 is abrogated verse. No compulsion religion is abrogated by nine vices, the verse of the sword. We'll go to you all. You claim that you are studied, but who persecuted, persecuted your so-called Jesus? Jesus was never persecuted because he, that's why he died. Jesus came to this world to die. As a matter of fact, before he was conceived in Virgin Mary's mother womb, the Holy Spirit, or actually Angel Gabriel, the real Angel Gabriel, told Mary that you will conceive and you have a child. You shall name him Yeshua, which means Savior. As a matter of fact, Muhammad, one of the deception of Islam is he changed the name of Jesus from Yeshua, the Arabic word, which is supposed to be Yeshua, Yeshua, to Isa, what Isa means, non-Arabic mean, word, have no meaning whatsoever. So, now we lost the purpose of the coming of Jesus this world. He came to die on the cross. He was not persecuted. No Jew killing, no Roman killing. He said, I put my life and I will take it back. He said, you put this table down and I will raise him up on the third day. Jesus came to die to save our souls. All right. 
to you all. How can we all be brothers and sisters in the faith if our faith is in two different gods? Our faith, our faith, is, our faith is not in two different gods. We, we, we worship the one God. Uh, some people say God, some people say Allah. You know, but we're both talking about the creator of the heavens and the earth. All that we know and all that we don't know. Uh, the only difference in us is that, you know, you worship on Sundays, we worship on Fridays. You know, we, you have your mode of worship, we have our mode of worship. But uh, the, the, the point is, is that we worship the one God. I would like to say that um, during the time when uh, the prophet, when Prophet Muhammad was um, first started teaching, uh, many of his followers they were persecuted, and many of and, and and the prophet, in order to save his life, uh, uh, he told them to go to uh, Abyssinia, a, a Christian kingdom, and the Christian uh, king saved. Uh, the Muslims from persecution when they was um, about to be extradited back to Mecca. So, you know, our whole point, you know, is not to, God, you know, just keep trying to hurt people. That's not why we're here. <clears throat> you know, you know, and, you know, and, you know, you know, I mean, you know, nothing that this man has said today, you know, is, is truthful. You know, Jesus, you know, you worship your way, we worship our way, but we worship the same God. God said to us, any who believe and do deeds of righteousness, be he Muslim, Christian, or Jew, on them shall be no fear, nor shall they grieve. That's what the Muslims believe. It's my understanding that the God that the Muslims worship does not have a son. If that's the truth, we can't worship the same God. That's right. He doesn't have a son. Then God. we can't worship the same well, God. Well, I'm not asking you to. Uh, I'm just, I'm just telling you what we believe. You know, you believe what you believe. We believe what we believe. But okay. God says in the in the Holy Quran, said He neither begets nor is He begotten. He doesn't have children, and and uh, and He was never a child Himself. So, uh, so, so you're right about that, Paul. I'm, I'm amazed. How in the world you say in one sentence that we worship the same God if our God is a Father, Son, Holy Spirit and your God have no Son and He have no Holy Spirit. God said, Jesus said, then the Bible says, and He, he said this, worship, uh, when, 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 when He was confronted by the people uh, about uh, the, 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 uh, the commandments, Jesus said the, the first commandment is worship the Lord your God with all thy heart, soul, and mind. And the second one is love thy neighbor as thyself. He didn't say worship him. Jesus says, I came on the authority of him that sent me. Jesus said also that, that uh, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of who? God. Not me, but God. So, so, so if th there's no place in the scripture, in the New Testament, well, you can find what Jesus said. He was God. All right. Sounds All right. good. Next question. Well, one little next question. Well, I have to repeat Jesus, Jesus never said he was God. So with all respect, you have not read the Bible. Even the verses you're quoting from the Bible, you have no idea what you're saying. When Jesus said, the Lord our God is one. Do you know how, what is that word Lord in the Greek language? It is plural. Our God is one. Here's the true three and one. So you don't know what you're talking about. Uh, Jesus accepted worship. You read throughout the Bible. And they worshipped him. Especially after the re resurrection. They worshipped Jesus. And Jesus never once said, don't worship me. As a matter of fact, when you go to the book of Revelation, you see the angel and John. And John worships the angel and angel said, no, don't worship me. I am a servant of him. Who? The Yahweh, the I am, the Alpha and the Omega, Jesus Christ in the book of Revelation. The last, thing, know what you're talking last about. thing I'm going to say about that is this, and that is that, um, uh, and that is that, uh, Jesus, Jesus said, said what I, what I said earlier, and that is that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, and that uh, uh, worship the Lord, uh, my God, 
and your God. That's and in the Quran. Only that's shit. That, now the, that, in that's the in the Bible. Bible. Uh, worship your God and my God and him only shall I worship. Well, and why callest thou me good? No Can one you is tell good me what but verse, what chapter verse? You know what you, you already know what it is. You, you're a Bible scholar. You know what it is. The, we'll worship, go on to the next know, question. Call next nobody question. God but right, good but before him. I, him before him. I ask this next question, if you all saw all the pieces of paper that came up here, there's absolutely no way I'm going to get to all the questions. So I'm going to apologize <laughs> to you now. Uh, the next one, there's two Arabic words. Sure. I don't speak Arabic, so I'm not. That's okay. Do your best. Do these two words below appear in the Quran together? Harp puts Oh! Holy war, that's wonderful. There are 26 verses of the Quran where you hear the word jihad. The smart Muslims, the deceivers like Zir Allah, like Yusuf Ali and others, did not translate them to the English translation. That's why our translation is the only accurate English translation. The word jihad, 26 verses of the Quran, interpreted by all Muslim scholars, not some, but all Muslim scholars to be holy war. The word engaged in war, qatilu, is interpreted by all Muslim scholars to be jihad. So you got 79 verses in the Quran, it says war, and Muslim scholars said it is jihad. And we got 26 verses of the Quran, the Quran said jihad, and interpreted to be war. So the word harb muqaddasa never written in the Quran. And so a lots of words never written in the Quran. Do you know that the shahada, to be a Muslim, to say there is no, I bear witness, there is no God except Allah, and I bear witness that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. That is the first pillar in Islam. You could not find it in the Quran. And you cannot be a Muslim without it. So how in the world you became Muslim without something that does not exist in the Quran? And by the way, it's a dumb witness. Why? To bear witness, you have to see by your eyes, hear by your ear, smell by your nose, taste by your tongue, touch by your hand. And not one Muslim, even including these three gentlemen who sit next to me, heard Muhammad, smell Muhammad, touch Muhammad, or see Muhammad. But they bear witness to something they don't know anything about. Why? Because Muhammad said so. Do we have a second witness? There is not a second witness, only Muhammad. Even his wife Khadijah, who assured him that he is a prophet of Allah, and that spirit is not a demonic spirit, but it was an angel, and she named him Gabriel, between her and Warakam the Nofal. She herself never saw angel Gabriel. You all can have a rebuttal for that. I'd like for y'all to really understand from your own minds and your own souls, and if you read the book, the Holy Quran for yourself, ask God to take Satan out of it while you're reading it. If you got the Bible, do the same thing. But now the word you had, as it's written from the word go, mean you had within yourself. You got to fight this evil that is within yourself so you can conquer it and be a human being, which Allah God said he keeps creating you to be a dignified human being. That's the reason I said here, I will not know myself. Because God Almighty has raised me up in a dignified form of the way. Jihad does not mean what a lot of people say. What you see going on in this world today, brothers and sisters, trust me. If Allah God wanted to stop the ice, if he wanted to stop uh, being led from fire and the you going to tell me he can't stop it? When he created it, he created this brother right here. This brother Tom made tied to the roof of his mouth at night when he go to sleep. He couldn't get it away if he wanted to. Because he used the same tongue that God gave him to bring the people the word of God called Islam and Christianity is supposed to be supposed to be about peace, love, equality, justice. Among all mankind, right in Egypt, if you looked at the television when they were had that uprising over there, they had Christians and Muslims out there in that square. They were so tight you couldn't come between them. That's the way it is over there in Egypt. But now, if you're a renegade, or if you're a criminal, quite natural, you do the thing that a criminal do. So I'm telling you again, now read your own book and think about what I'm saying now in your mother's womb in three shades of dark waters. No man know whether you're going to be a boy or girl but God. Mama didn't even know. It. When you came into this world by the grace of God, you seen three great light, moon, sun, and star. 
Who were you crying to? Who were you reaching out to? Before you started saying a word out of your mouth. You were conversing with the angels who protect you. Every one of us here right now got angels in front of you, behind you, or both sides of you that protects you from the, this evil world. If you sincerely believe that Jesus Christ is a son of God, all you got to do is show me how God did that. I haven't had anybody show me that. If you are true to yourself, read your book, study your book, and get to know your book. Because you got to go back to God. You got to die. When you came in this world, death was with you. All right, we're going to move on to the next question. This is for you all. Uh, why are the verses that were on the screen, why did you all say those were lies? What did we what now? say that the verses and the, the things that were on the screen during the presentation, yeah. why did you say those were lies? Because um, most of it, m many of them was not even, are not even in the Quran uh, to begin with. And the one that uh, he talked about, and um, he, he, he uh, misrepresented them. Uh, I'll give, give you a good example, I'll give you a couple of examples. One of them was when he talked about prophethood, as I said a little while ago. Uh, and he stopped, uh, there, were, there were many prophets, but Allah said in the Quran that when he was trying to contradict the fact that, that, uh, that Prophet Muhammad was a prophet, and the Quran clearly states that uh, he is the uh, last prophet, the last messenger to all humanity, to all, and he's a perfect example for all creation. Uh, another lie that he told is, is when he was um, uh, talking about uh, uh, Allah being a deceiver. No, Allah is not a deceiver. And this is how he misrepresents uh, the, the truth of the Quran. Uh, Allah created this creation uh, uh, on a just balance, you know. And, and, and if, you, if, you, um, if you come to the world that Allah has created perfectly, then with corruption, then corruption works against you. That doesn't mean that Allah was a, 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 a deceiver. It means that he planned the creation on, on justice. And when injustice comes, then uh, it works against the one who brings the injustice. That's what that verse in the Quran uh, is talking about. Uh, as my brother was just saying again about the word jihad. Jihad is a holy war. But it is the war within the individual, the war between what's right and what's wrong. That's the greatest war that anybody will ever fight in their life. Are you going to do wrong? Are you going to do right? Are you going to make an excuse? Well, I better sell this dope if I don't. Somebody else going to sell it. You know what I'm saying? So they're going to they gonna drink alcohol anyway, so I might as well be the one to make the money off of it. You know, so this is the jihad. You know, she's a pretty woman, so ain't nobody going to see me doing this. You know, so that's the jihad. It's the jihad, the individual jihad. There's, there's nothing about going against another uh, country or anything like that uh, because they don't, they don't uh, uh, worship the way you worship. And last but not least, last but not least, uh, Allah says in the Quran, there's no compulsion. Allah don't need none of us. You know, we're not compelled to, to worship Him. You can be an atheist, you can be a believer, you can be whatever you want. If you if you are a believer, it's to your good. If you're an atheist or if you're somebody who don't believe in God, then it's to your destruction. You know, so there's no compulsion in religion. You know, truth stands out clear from error. So all of the the misrepresentation the misrepresentation that my brother made, you know, I mean I couldn't write all of that stuff down. I'm not here to try to refute a bunch of lies and a bunch of misrepresentation. You know, the truth is is, 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 is available to people who really want to, who really want to, I mean, they got technology now, they got Google and everything else. If you want to really know the truth, then go look it, look it up for yourself. All right. Once again, you mentioned the verse, Quran chapter 2, verse 265, three times already. No compulsion in religion. If you go online right now, in any Muslim website, and reads the interpretation of that verse by any Muslim scholar. They will tell you, هذه آية منسوخة نسختها سورة التوبة آية خمسة آية السيف. That verse is abrogated, which means canceled, erased, 
deleted by Quran chapter 9 verse 4 verse 5 which is the verse of the sword a verse I showed you earlier that is to kill them take their women and children as slaves or concubine or they convert Islam here is the three options which is a replacement of Quran chapter 2 verse 256 now Quran chapter 2 verse 62 he said earlier the Jews and the Christians, the Sabaeans, whoever believe in Allah in the last day, there is no fear of them. And they will not, excuse me, Sabaeans, either worshippers. Yes, Muhammad said that when in the early days when he lived in Mecca, when he had a small number of followers, the Jews and the Christians, either worship or around them. He actually went inside the Kaaba to worship his black stone for a whole 63 years, all his life. And the first 40 years, he never killed anybody of those who worshiped idols. When Muhammad did not have the upper hand, he spoke highly of the Jews and the Christians and the idol worshippers, as Muslims do today in America. But that verse is also abrogated by Quran chapter 3, verse 85, which states, no other religion accepted by Allah except the religion of Islam. And those who will not believe in religion of Islam will be among the losers. So hello, there's a contradiction in the Quran. No, there is no contradiction in the Quran. Allah abrogate many verses in the Quran. Now, he said, Jesus never said, or when have you said the Bible, say Jesus is God. John 20, 20. No, no, let me actually take you to Isaiah. The prophet Isaiah, one of the prophets which Muhammad mentioned in the hadith, hardly mentioned in the Quran. Chapter 9, verse 6 and 10. Listen, for unto us a child is born, and to us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And I can go on and on and on. Now, that is the Son of God, the Almighty God. That is the Jesus we believe in. Now let me take you to the book of John, chapter 1, and verses and verse 1. Listen to what the Bible said. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning was God. All things was made by Him. And you understand here, the word of God created everything. Everything exists, everything you can't even see. All created by the word of God. Let's go to John chapter 1 verse 14. And the word became flesh. My dear friends, the Quran in chapter 4 verse 171. Allah said, Jesus Christ is the word of Allah and a spirit from him. Not a word from Allah, no. The word of Allah. Muslim believe that Allah's word is eternal. Muslim believe the spirit of Allah is eternal. Even though, even though Muslim scholars have... 19 different interpretations to what is the Spirit of Allah and they have no clue what it is. But in the Bible we know that the God the Father, God the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, and God the Son, the Word of God who became flesh. Muhammad did not, never once in the Quran, argue about the deity of Christ as we Christians believe in it. In Quran chapter 5 verse 116, Muhammad said, Did you tell the people to worship you and your mother as God beside me? I'm sorry. That's not the sonship of Jesus Christ. God the Father got have sex with Virgin Mary and got her pregnant. No Christian ever believed in Virgin Mary to be a goddess or a mother of God. No. So, you see, even when Muhammad rejects the Trinity, which we believe in the, in the Bible, it is not what we believe in the Bible. It's something he else he heard out there. The deity of Christ is all over the scripture. Jesus Christ is God. I mean, I can go and read for another hour, but obviously, we know the scripture, they don't. Alright, this is for you all. How is it that in this time of terrorism and hatred across the country, now, December 2015, this church decided that it is right, the right time to purposely offend so many in the community? It's very simple. We can continue to be ignorant, foolish, and we will pretend that Islam is a loving, peaceful religion, even though there is not one verse of the Quran teach love and peace. I challenge my dear three friends sitting next to me to quote for me one verse. As a matter of fact, I've been given this challenge for the last, what, 24 years since I came to this country. One verse of the Quran teach love and peace. None of the verses I'm quoting here, with all respect, these people don't even speak Arabic. I wish one of, the, one of them can speak Arabic so can argue with me about this verse. But I think I'll be wasting my time to argue with him. That, that verse exists in the Quran because look, look, here it is in the Quran. It just means nothing. Do you not know it? So, such time as this, we can have one of the two things. We can continue to be foolish and we destroy ourselves. Because the Bible said in Isaiah 4, 6, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Or we can educate ourselves. American people are very smart about everything in life. But when it comes to Christianity, even Christians do not know too much about the Bible. When it comes to Islam, we know the opposite of what Islam is. Yes, Islam is spreading all over America. You know why? Because even people in America believe Islam is love, Islam is peace, and women are respected, and all these wonderful good things. But when you study the Quran, none of this is there. And when you look at the history, how Muhammad understood the word jihad? Do you know what is hermeneutics? To interpret the scripture? How the scholar 
interpret it right is go back to the original. How Muhammad understood the word jihad. How Muhammad practiced the word jihad. How early Muslim believers practiced the word jihad. And how they practiced the last 1400 years and how we can practice in America. I promise you. In the next 15 years, you'll have a little bit damage here, I mean, the terrorization here, terrorization in America. But 15 years from now, when Muslim in America will have the upper hand, as it is written in Quran chapter 37 and verse 35, they will destroy this country for good. Just leave them for another 15 years until they have the upper hand. So you can do one of those things. We can talk about it and show our love to the Muslim friends to let them know that their Muhammad is not a prophet. Their Muhammad is a very sinful man. You tell me, America, what does a 51 years old man have to do to engage to a girl of 6 years old? And then he has sex with her when she turned 9. So Muhammad was 54, having a wonderful relationship with his wife Aisha, his favorite wife, when she was 9. You know what's the conclusion? Muhammad is a child molester. Let's go to Quran chapter 66 verse 1. And Muhammad was doing what? Having sex with Mary is a Coptic woman. You know what the answer is? Muhammad is an adulterer. You go to Quran chapter 50 and verse, uh, chapter 33 and verse 50. And Allah says, And I believe in a woman who ever her, who offer herself to the apostle of Allah. If the apostle of Allah desire to have sex with her, it's a privilege for you, not for the rest of the believers. That there will not be shame on your part. You know what the conclusion is? Muhammad is a womanizer. Go to the hundreds of verses of the Quran which teach killing, and, and literally raping, what's what you get? Muhammad was a killer, Muhammad was a thief. But to the Muslims, Muhammad is the best man who ever walked on the face of the earth. I said, show me in the Quran that Muhammad is the best man who walked on the face of the earth. The answer is not there. But, you know, um, uh, first of all, you know, first of all, there is, there is no evidence of anything like that when Muhammad had sex with a, with a minor. You know, uh, he married, uh, he did have several wives, but no, no, nobody knows anything about Muhammad's sex life. He didn't come out the house the next morning and say, we did it, you know, so uh, all of that, you know, is just conjecture, you know. And uh, uh, as far as, as, far as um, uh, uh, al-Islam being the religion of peace, you know, when, when um, they tried to keep Muhammad out from making a pilgrimage to, um, to, to 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 the city of Mecca, even after a treaty had been had been established, and the Meccans came and um, and broke the treaty. You know they had told Muhammad him and his followers could make the Hajj, could make the pilgrimage, but they didn't make the pilgrimage because the Meccans broke the treaty. And while some of the fighters, the followers of Muhammad, wanted to go to war, Muhammad said, "No, we don't go to war." And after that, uh, uh, the religion spread all across Mecca peacefully. The way Al Islam spread it across the world is not was not with the sword. When it came into northern Africa, it was spread by Muslim businessmen. The people in Africa saw uh, the the ethics, the character, the good uprightness of the uh, people that they were dealing with, and they followed that example. Uh, when Muhammad marched back into Mecca with victory. Uh, he didn't go back in slaughtering and killing people. It wasn't a drop of blood shed. So, you know, you, you can listen to this brother and he can talk uh, uh, all of this talk and he sounds like he knows what he's talking about, but the only thing that he's doing is taking the verses of the Quran, he's taking the life of the prophet and misrepresenting it uh, grossly. Uh, last but not least, as far as the uh, 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 the, the, the Holy Quran teaches us about uh, uh, the unity of, of mankind. Uh, the only thing, and uh, taking the Shahada, the Shahada is what you take, what Muslims use in order to convert to the religion. Just like baptism is what Christians use to, uh, for their initiation into Christianity. It ain't a, a thing about do you see bear on witness that you see Allah with your physical eye is how you conduct yourself. That's how you bear witness to God. That's how you bear witness to any truth, to any faith. You know, and, and that statement alone tells you how deceptive this particular person is. He uses words out of context. He uses the religion out of context. Any third grader would know that to bear witness to the to when we say La ilaha illallah Muhammad the Rasulullah. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is the prophet of Allah. That doesn't mean I saw Allah with my physical eye. And just by the fact that he uses that 
um, uh, to try to, to deceive you, it shows you the character, the deception that he's been using all night since we've been on this stage. If he'll deceive you in one thing, he'll deceive you in something else. And last but not least, jihad, it means the holy war within the individual. You know, I don't, I, don't, I don't know what scholars he's quoting. We don't follow scholars. We follow the example of Muhammad the prophet. You can, you can quote scholars from here to eternity, but scholars don't make this religion. This book makes this religion. And, everything, and nothing that he said in this, uh, in, uh, on this stage tonight uh, is true about, about this religion. I have one question. I have one question. Why is it? Explain to me. One of you, one of you three, explain to me why this will is be you all's last part on this question. That those that are born, raised in the Middle East and/or speak Arabic as their native tongue, why do they have a different understanding in the Quran than, than you, you three or whoever? Well, one one remnant. They, I mean, Mr. Salam said last night we need to have so you to understand the Quran. You need to have a good grip. On the air, on the Arabic, and I agree. I agree. What I agree wholeheartedly. That's why he's here. But if if, if the people that speak it is their if, if the people that speak it is their native native tongue, they have a total different understanding. Is what y'all teach. Well, the thing is, you're right. Our leader is Imam W. D. Muhammad. This is the leader of the Muslim. But now, let me say this. Uh, sad to say, and you are right. Sad to say that many people over in the East who, whose native tongue is Arabic, they have not been brought up uh, to, to, uh, in order to understand the religion as, it, uh, as their, their understanding has not evolved to what we, many of that's why the guy who, who, uh, who, 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 who heads up ISIS, you know, talking about the caliphate and these kinds of things, the Islamic State, there's no such thing as the caliphate. The, the word caliphate is not a position. The word caliphate means uh, the, the, the human potential. It means the potential of the human being to grow closer to God. You know, uh, the, 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 word, the, word, the word Muslim itself, the word Muslim itself, it means the, the nature of the human being. It is the, it is the obedient nature of all creation. So just because somebody speaks Arabic, their understanding may have not evolved uh, to the level, to the level, and and their actions will prove that their understanding may have not evolved uh, to the uh, to the de to the degree that they can apply it in today's world. Just like many Christians. So praise Allah for American English, because y'all got it right. Is that what we're saying? <laughs> no, we, we we understand the Arabic, my friends. We 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 read the Arabic. No, you don't. Hey, hey, hold on, hold on, please, 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 please. Okay, these will be the final comments of the evening. You know, the more our dear friends talk, the more I know they have no clue what Islam is. And I'm not kidding. And I believe they're sincere. They're not Brexit Takayu. These three gentlemen here, deep in my heart, I believe they have no idea what Islam is. When he tell me there's no Khalifa, when Muhammad died, he appointed Abu Bakr Sadiq the father-in-law of his favorite wife Aisha to be Khalifa. By the way, Aisha told us in the Hadith, Muhammad married me when I was six, had sex with me when I was nine, and he died when I was 18. Correct Hadith by Bukhari, by Muslim, by everybody. And Muhammad said, take half of your religion out of Aisha. Now, you are obviously came from the nation of Islam. And you are here to debate me about Allah is Satan or not. Do you know who is your Allah in the nation of Islam? God have mercy on the black American people who got duped into Islam for the, for the racism of color. Their Allah is man, a man, an Arab man, by the name Fard Muhammad, a man who claimed to be Allah, and he convinced Elisha Muhammad to be a prophet. Now, Elisha Muhammad's son got smart. I said, why well, I can't follow this? That makes no sense. My dad is not a prophet. He removed the Sunni Muslim. But the nation of Islam, are duping literally over four million black Americans who know nothing about Christianity nor Islam because in common sense Muhammad is the Khatim al Mursaleen, the final messenger. He's the final, he's the last. Muhammad, Elijah Muhammad could never be a prophet. Far Muhammad could never be a god. I'm shocked about the black American. And it is all about race. 
And Islam have nothing to do with racism. When Malcolm X went to perform the Hajj, he was shocked to find white Muslim performing the Hajj. He came to America and he said to the nation of Islam, wait a minute, it has nothing to do with color, as long as you're a Muslim. Then Elisha Muhammad killed him. Killing in Islam, it doesn't matter where start. If you study the history of Islam, and I'm a student of history, guys. I'm not, I didn't read a book. I've been reading this all my life. It is a gushing river of blood. Muhammad understood jihad to be killing. That's why he was involved in 39 battles. I can give you their names, my dear friends. One battle after one, but I give you the date. The name of the battle, the date of the battle, how many Jews were killed, how many Christians were killed, how many swords, swords and weapons he got out of these villages. Bani Quraysh is one of them. Quran chapter 63, verse 26 and 27. That is Islam. You guys have no clue what Islam is. I'm sorry. I'm very disappointed that I don't have somebody who knows Islam who can sit here tonight and debate me. At the same time, I feel sorry for all the black brothers of who are getting hot in this. I know Arabic. Brother. In the Quran, in the Quran it says that the Arab is the biggest hypocrite. I can go to the Quran and read it to your face. The Arab is the biggest please, hypocrite please, in Islam. Brother, brother, it says, if you want to talk to him, we'll talk to him afterwards. All right, all right, all right. Alright, thank you all for coming out tonight. Well, we all we all make yourself available. I thought it was y'all were peaceful. Blur Blurb in too no, peaceful. Please, please, really? please, no, please, they're please. allowing you. They're allowing you to play games. No. They're allowing you please. to uh, publicize your books and, and get publicity. And get publicity. You're good. Uh, we're done. 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 In the Quran, it says the Arab is the enemy of Islam. Fact. And in the Quran, the Arab who came to Egypt and killed four million Christian men and raped their wife, and that's why a whole country is a Muslim country. Oh. Hey, no, that's right. You have no idea what you're talking about. We're done. 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 All right. We're done. If you all have any questions, feel free to ask afterwards. Thank you all so much. Have a good night. Thank you. <laughs>